Hello, everybody. Welcome back to another day of your self-healing body, how to use energy, emotion, and intuition to raise our joy and vitality. And I'm, woo! <laughs> I'm very excited to have Michelle Alba with us here today. Welcome, Michelle. Thank you so much for having me, and thank you to everyone that said yes to being a part of this amazing video series. Michelle has a background in yoga instruction and many other modalities, which I would love to have her share with us the background. She's developed her own healing technique, the Alba Method. And so that's really what this method is for, is to fill the gap where people can learn how to harness their own processing of emotions in their body, trapped emotions, and they're actually learning how to live, releasing, processing through their life. So it's not just come for a session, it's live, flowing your emotions, live embracing all of who you are. And Tantra is another approach that has helped me a lot to embrace all of who I am because I was raised Catholic and, you know, sex, talking about sex or sexuality right away, just being a woman. If you say you're horny <laughs> or you like sex, you know, that's not something you're supposed to say and people judge you. And so there's a lot of I was suppressing who I really was, which is essential Cancerian goddess who loves her, you know, feeling alive uh, through the creative energy, the sexual energy. Um, so I've basically gotten out of my prison that I put myself in <laughs> based on the programming that I had as a child and the upbringing. And I think a lot of us women are living caged in um, that we don't even know. And then we feel something's missing in our lives. So I was missing in my own life for many years. And now I just, I, I gave myself permission to own this method and, a, and an approach because for a long time, I didn't want to call it anything because titles are labels and that's more the ego. So I was judging myself, naming it something. And this marketing businesswoman, Michelle Villalobos said, you know, Michelle, you do so many things. Why don't you just call it your name, the Alva Method, because you just rolled off all these trainings and certifications you have. And I just forgot half of what you said. She goes, just call it the Alva Method. And I that's, like that. I like that's that. beautiful. I like it too, because it really is a reflection of you and your experience and what you bring to the world. So why not call it the Alva Method, right? The thing is, I was so judgmental. I was the most judgmental person about it because I thought, well, who am I to name something, something new? And so there's Joseph Pilates and, and everybody knows the Pilates method. And I thought to myself, well, what women are, are naming methods, you know, and to just really give myself the valuing and appreciation of what I have created, which it's taken me a lot of breaking down walls of resistance and fear and, the thing is, it serves people so well, and it creates rapid results for people that it's almost a disservice for me to be in my ego about the insecurity of, could I really do this? Um, and at the same I time- I love it. I love it. I feel like you're actually speaking directly to me now, as well as obviously the listeners, because I have a background in chiropractic, which is also very male dominated. And every chiropractic technique almost is named after a guy's last name. And it's wow. very interesting. And I'm in the process of <laughs> coming into my own with my own technique and going through very similar things. So see, we'll have to have another, another conversation about that. And I think that, that again, though, it does just really play into the difference that we feel in society in general, being, you know, growing up as a man or growing up as a woman. Um, but you're allowing people to break free of that, to break free of the programming, to break free of the self-judgments and limitations. Um, one of the questions that I have actually for you is what are like maybe one to three things that women can do right now to start to move more into their feminine nature, more into their feminine um, way of being that's the more authentic way for them to experience themselves? The very first thing, that's a great question. So three ways that a woman can connect to her feminine essence. The very first way is to be grateful that you were given your feminine body. Our creator decided that you're going to be a woman. You're going to have a vagina and ovaries and a uterus and breasts. And to just really feel gratitude 
look in the mirror. I highly recommend this exercise to just be naked in front of the mirror and look at yourself and realize that 99% of you is energy. Don't get too caught up on the physicality. You know, this is something that helps me so much is to feel grateful for the energy that I am and that energy that is dominant in your essence is love, whether you're a man or a woman. So if you can look at yourself and just say, I'm just gonna choose to believe Michelle that I'm love energy and this body is the temple of my soul, regardless of whether you're a man or a woman, just to really celebrate that, play your favorite song and just dance your energy, dance your body. And you can start to rise in love with yourself and move yourself in ways that make you feel good. And this is something about the feminine energy is to really embrace all of who you are and receive yourself. So the feminine energy is all about receptivity. I have two brothers and I was raised very tomboy. I became a tomboy, I was a tomboy and I would only wear pants and I didn't like to wear dresses and because I have two brothers. And so I didn't embrace my femininity most of my life. And so I got to feel what it, what it feels like to miss myself completely. I was more masculine, which I think a lot of women in this world are more masculine dominated people. So the a second way of connecting to yourself would be to open up your body and spend more time with your body open to receive in general. So the thing is, a lot of times we're crossing our arms, we're crossing our legs, or we're protecting ourselves we think we're not safe in the world so you opening yourself literally laying down on your back and this is one of the free gifts that i'm gifting everyone is this e3 breathing exercise where you create your body alignment in a way that is open to create your energy of openness which is the feminine energy. So gratitude, number one. Number two is spend time with your body open. Because if your body is physically open, that means that you're more vulnerable. You're more comfortable being vulnerable and open. And I know for me, I mean, I'm a cancer. I've protected a lot myself from getting hurt within relationships in the past, or I've pushed people away. So if you're a person that has a hard time letting people help you, or if someone, wants to love you and you've pushed them away like I have in the past, um, I definitely would encourage more connection to your feminine energy. And then another last third way I would recommend highly is spend time with your eyes closed and mm -hmm. feeling inside your body. And mm -hmm. also when you have meals like breakfast, lunch, or dinner, close your eyes and smell your food. When you're tasting your food, close your eyes and just let yourself feel more the food in your mouth. Um, mm -hmm. If you like essential oils or you like you wear a perfume, close your eyes and smell. So getting more present to the senses. This closing your eyes thing is really great to get in touch with feeling and getting into your body. I spend a lot of my time with my eyes closed during my day when I'm working. And when I take a shower, for example, closing your eyes and feeling yourself, washing yourself, mm -hmm. that's actually opening you up to more of the creative energy, your intuition mm -hmm. access. Mm -hmm. And so that's something, the feminine energy is all about higher connecting to the, the unknown, you know, that mysterious force of creation that guides our intuition and heart connection. So a lot of uh, times we're with our eyes open, we're focusing outwards. Mm -hmm. So focusing inwards and spending more time just feeling, you know, how am I feeling right now about going to visit a friend? How am I feeling about ordering you know, thinking of just ordered in the restaurant, or if you're shopping for clothes, how do I feel about this dress or this pair of shoes? How do I feel about it? Uh, that helps you to be more in your feminine, that, and you're receiving the wisdom of yourself, and you're also expanding your intuition, your higher knowing sense. So living intuitively guided is so much more fun than living based on what your friend thinks you should do or based on what the programming of the past is telling you, but then you keep butting heads with yourself and you're like, no, this doesn't feel right. Um, so intuitive guidance, I feel, is really helpful. <laughs> to have. That is beautiful. I love it. I love it. So 
speaking about the intuitive um, way of being and bringing it into the body, say somebody comes in with physical pain. I have a backache or whatever. And where do you start with them? Um, where do you start with them? And how do you bring in intuitive wisdom in the healing process? The ALVA method is all about accessing your higher knowing. And so the very first thing is we look at chronic pain as a gift. It's a blessing and we call it wisdom, body wisdom. So instead of calling it body pain, we call it wisdom. So how you look at your pain is actually going to make it more whatever it is. How you perceive your low back pain. So for example, I hate my low back pain. Oh, it's killing me. You know, my back is killing me. I can't stand it. I'm so right. frustrated. I'm so ashamed. You know, I do all these things. People come that are actually healers. They're energy healers, for example, um, but they're having the physical pain. Uh, mm -hmm. So this is a process where the very first step would be to actually look at it through the eyes of grace, through the eyes of gratitude. So somebody might say, no, I'm not grateful for it. So that quickly lets you know where you're at on your healing journey. So if you say right away, like, you're nuts, Michelle, you want me to be grateful for my back pain? That lets you know to what degree you're resisting healing, because mm -hmm. healing means to embrace, to become whole. Mm -hmm. So yes, embracing your sensations, whatever they are, is a part of it. And then the other aspect would be to actually close your eyes, mm -hmm. keep your hand over your back, wherever you're feeling pain. So everybody could do this right now. If you have a part of your body that's in pain, you can literally yeah. put your hand yeah. over it. Yep. And you, can, you can be grateful for it because it's wisdom. There's something that is out of balance in your body, in your mind, in your soul, in your life, that your body's just tapping on the shoulder saying, please pay attention to me. Mm -hmm. So then the second part would be to breathe and expand into that part of your body. So you could pretend you have lungs in your shoulder or you have a lung in your low back, this is what I tell people. So you're inflating like a balloon, your upper traps or mm -hmm. your low back. And when you create expansion feeling, you're actually creating more elongation of those actin and myosin fibers, the muscles that are contracted. They're usually like so contracted and tight. So when you, when you expand into that part of your body, you're lengthening those fibers and you're actually giving yourself a more elongated experience of yourself, mm -hmm. which is also creating more of an expansion and love is expansion. So instead of feeling contractedness, which is what a lot of us feel hardness, you're creating a shift in your frequency and in your fascia, in your muscles, and then creating a sound. So what is your pain sound like? I ask my clients to sound out the pain. So for example, it might be uh, because with that pain might come anger, frustration, resentment, bitterness towards their body. And a lot of us have learned how to hold in expression of our pain. We maybe just put up with it and we just keep it inside and we don't want to complain or we don't want to bother anyone. So we bottle it up inside. So a lot of the work that I do is about using your sounds, opening your mouth, expressing out. And then literally people are like, wait a minute, my shoulder feels better. What? You know, you haven't even massaged me. You haven't even touched me. And I've discovered that people literally with just the neuro-linguistic programming hypnosis, this process that I take people on, they can go from an eight out of 10 pain to a two out of 10 pain, just by them doing their own thing that I'm guiding them and I'm not even touching them. So isn't that amazing how you yourself right now sitting watching this, if you're in pain, eight out of 10, can take yourself down to a two out of 10, just from sitting across from me and me guiding you to learn how to process your own tensions. So that's really inspiring for me to be able to facilitate for someone. And it also shows me how powerful we are. You're so powerful. Every single one of you has the ability to do this because I'm guiding you in the process. So it's foolproof. If you have a brain that works and your physiology works, you can take yourself from an eight out of 10 pain to a two just by 
following the Ava method, you know, this process that I've created, which is really about unlocking the release, un unlocking ourselves from ourselves, basically. So I get really inspired uh, with what's possible for people. And you don't have to have a yoga background. You don't have to exercise every day. You don't have to know anything about being healthy. Just following this process, you will have results because you are that powerful. Just with what I shared, people do that simple, I can repeat it, is be grateful, number one. Number two, look at it as wisdom. Put your hand over it. Breathe and expand into it. And then express whatever you're genuinely feeling there. A lot of us are not in touch with what we're really feeling. A lot of us have learned to stuff down our real feelings. Or we're ashamed that we're ashamed of whatever's going on. So there's no way you're going to have freedom if you yourself are not even really being honest with yourself. And I know this because I was lying to myself for a lot of years, um, which caused me to then create this authentic way of healing. Well, you know, Michelle, that's so beautiful. Thank you for sharing. And I think I like to say that, you know, the body doesn't lie. We can yeah. help ourselves whatever we want. And then once we go in and feel into what's there, it's there for us. And the piece I love about, I've also done, or I do toning and work with people and expressing emotions through sound, is that sometimes we do have stories or emotions or memories when we connect in, and sometimes we don't. It's just energy that's blocked. And sound doesn't care. <laughs> it's just the vibration gets to get expressed, right? And then it's free. So that's so exciting. Farts. We fart out our emotions. <laughs> That's going to be the title of your talk. <laughs> Fart out your emotions. Yeah, instead of farting out through your butt, you're farting out through your mouth. Ah! <laughs> Never heard that one before. That's a new one. <laughs> Great. So on that note, where do we go from there? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> so I think um, I really, you've already been talking so much about judgment and shame and how we limit ourselves. Um, and so I think we must, before we, we wrap up for today, touch on forgiveness a little more specifically. <laughs> yeah, so when we talk about forgiveness, um, I'd love for people to take a moment right now and just close your eyes and ask yourself, is there someone in my past that I resent? Mm -hmm. When I think about my past relationships, is there someone that I avoid in my life from my past or someone that I feel has hurt me? Is there someone that hurt me? Someone that I haven't forgiven? Or am I in peace and right relationship with everyone in my past? Have I embraced all my relationships of my past? And just notice what comes up. Take a deep breath in. And how do I feel about my parents? Whether they're alive or deceased? Am I in harmony with my parents? Do I accept my parents? Do I accept my siblings? Or do I judge people? Do I analyze people? Do I criticize people? So, the feeling of being loved and then is ask yourself, not something is that something we get about from other people. I have done, have so when I we say, I want to feel loved, I want to meet I someone, and I want to feel loved in the past. The I'm only still place on you can have the feeling of someone loving you is there something is from I have done first to having the feeling that I have of loving not forgiven yourself myself about. And that means being love in and action. Do I so make how do we be love? A priority in my life? Being love or means am I resentful I and bitter all towards myself I am. or towards someone? Being in love means is I have released rampant any resentment, being? bitterness, anger, judgment, criticism bitter towards myself. Anyone? It could be. Either. So am I hard about anything in the past that I've ever you know, done to hurt anyone? A, a group have I ever been angry at and myself just about what comes something up for that you. I've done? So we is are part love. Of me that our nature I don't is like to be loved. Physically, and when we resent mentally, or emotionally, the, the way that I am, or we're bitter, where our do body I cannot myself? really shine. Where our do being I can't really be challenge what we really are, which is love. With myself. And so, so it doesn't hard feel on myself about good anything. to resent. It doesn't make us feel good. Am I judgmental or critical about stressful. anything about myself? Any our body is not at peace myself. when we're resentful or we're avoiding A way something. to love ourselves more so is to is be that 
knowing what I know about energy is if you're, res if you're resisting someone, if you're harboring resentment and bitterness and you haven't released them, you're going to actually attract more reasons to be bitter and be resentful. So the more I love myself, the more I actually speak up in my relationships. You don't do for the other person. So some people say, I'm not going to forgive him. I'm not going to give him the, 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 the happiness of knowing that he's, love myself, he's free of me. You know, so you forgive for yourself. Myself you actually and others. Whatever I am with of myself whatever you think you need to be forgiving about how others treat um, me. for yourself. So and that I is a form of self-love. So when we talk about self-love, self if you really want to be fitness, loved and be what you really thoughts, are at your core being, I'm gonna attract then you can make a list of all the people you hate or all the people you're angry at or all the governments or all the whatevers about the world that you hate. And you can look at that. Felt love with myself, and then you can be allowing yourself to feel the emotions related to what you wrote to you down. So this is where the Alba method is great you. to help people someone to process, to actually have a able to step one, step two, step three to you on how to process that. You know but even be beyond that, it's really important yourself. to ask yourself. So What's my perception of that person? That How do I perceive and that us? event? That's because a lot of us play the victim we role, and we say, oh, he cheated on me, that, that he lied to me, he did this to me. To ourselves. And the thing is, when, so when you we say, perceive oh, you know, yourself as a victim, me. you take your power stay. away, because he you're actually make allowing someone to be responsible for your state of being. So this might be a little more intense of a conversation, but... Where am what I what I have learned is to own others. your so we can life and take like responsibility and for where what we are co-creating. Kind of so, for example, if you get feedback, cheated on, then where we you can look at your relationships like as relationship a reflection of your inner relationship with yourself. So, so if there's an infidelity, cheating, then you can ask yourself, Amazing. where am I cheating on myself? Where am I not really honoring my truth? Where am I selling myself short or not appreciating myself enough? Where am I not connecting to myself? Or what am I avoiding about myself? Instead of focusing on the other person and being angry at the other person, you can, you can realize, oh, relationships. Hmm, I'm a magnet and whatever I am, that's what I attract. So if you constantly are attracting people that don't appreciate you, people that lie to you, people that are not respecting you, you can be grateful that you're getting the feedback that you can learn to respect yourself more. You can learn to make more time to prioritize self-care, being accepting of yourself, loving and healing parts of yourself that maybe you're hard on about yourself. Mm -hmm. And the forgiveness aspect of it would be to embrace all of who you are and ask yourself, well, what did I learn from that event? So rather than just say, I forgive you or I forgive myself, well, what about myself in the past can I learn from having hurt someone or having done something that I regret? What's the gift of me having done that? And how can I learn for the next time to do something differently? So if I- Yeah, I think that's amazing, amazing. And it's funny, I've been um, married for da 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 da, it'll be eight years in October. <laughs> And I've gone, thank you. I know it's one of the biggest blessings in my life. And I had crazy relationship karma before that. So I can relate to like, I kept attracting like the wrong people and we'd be in the same, I'd be in the same relationship with different people basically <laughs> and year after year. To all those relationships. Right. Well, it, right. It took me to take response. It taught me to take responsibility for my life and who, you know, heal wounds from, or unforgivenesses with my father and all kinds of stuff. Where now, even after I was married with my husband in the first few years, there was a lot of getting to know each other and figuring things out, right? And I'll be darned if I would catch myself going, he just needs to change. I want him to change, right? And it's like, okay, maybe it's 95% his fault, but it's 5% my fault. I mean, it's really funny the way my mind would work, right? So I did say, well, even if I'm only 5% responsible, I'll take responsibility for this and shift what I can shift. Mm -hmm. And then it was amazing as I shift, our whole dynamic shifted. Yeah, it's just so it, amazing. 
So even within relationship, you know, it's like we can recreate the types of relationships we have by exactly what you're talking about. So yeah, and the amazing thing is because we're energy, we can literally heal at the speed of light and sound and that fast. So when I work with people, they have these amazing shifts, eight out of 10 to zero pain. And then they go home and they say, oh my God, Michelle, my husband for the first time thanked me. Oh my God, my husband today, he took out the trash or some, some crazy new action happens to them that they can't believe. And I tell them, well, of course you, I can believe that. Of course, you know, you're so yeah. powerful, you yeah. shifted. And so all along your obstacles have been internal. And this is where we are deliberate creators in the work that I do. It's called the Powerful Creator Program, where my clients own that they're powerful creators. And I, I say co-creators because I do believe that there's a higher power that is guiding everything. It's mm -hmm. really we're surrendering to that inner guidance. Mm -hmm. um, and so really take ownership because a lot of people say, oh, well, you know, I'm going to leave it up to the universe to decide and the universe is taking care of me and the universe, you know, we'll see what the universe wants. Um, but really what I've discovered, it's more like, what do I want to create? Am I feeling the way that I want to create? So for mm -hmm. example, if I want to write a book, which I'm writing in this book, it's called Your Vagina Matters. And I've been freaking out about the title and, and the, you know, I have 10,000 words left. And so I'm more and more imagining what would it feel like to be holding the book, be at a book signing at Books and Books, be on stage sharing about Your Vagina Matters on TEDx. So I've been doing this practice of envisioning myself so that I overcome these fears of resistance, which I don't have to be upset about it. I could be like, yay, you know, I'm going to just get stronger and stronger and I'm going to keep uh, feeling what I want to create. And then I'll meet someone that wants to edit my book. You know, this is amazing. This man said, can you send me what you have so far? Mm -hmm. I mean, it's so amazing. So I've been the only one resisting myself from doing this. And, and this is what I noticed. And with relationships with men too, different reasons um, that, you know, my father left when I was 12 and I made up a story that I don't matter. I'm not lovable. There's so many stories I made up as a, as a girl that, if a guy did love me in the past, I would push him away. And so I would fulfill that prophecy, you know, those beliefs. And the more now I've totally dived deep into self-love, loving myself and, you know, everything that I talk about. And I see how man many people want to love me <laughs> or they'll say, you know, you're so lovable. I just want to love you. I mean, literally people will say that to me. They're like, I just want to squeeze you. I want to hug you. I want to be around you. And so it really is amazing. And, and receiving is something that I've been my whole life learning. And so it is just blows me away how when you really commit to yourself and say, you know what, I deserve it. I, all my dreams can come true and you just decide the minute you decide, you really feel it in your body. You know, something comes in immediately. The universe is always listening. So it's really exciting. I'd love to hear from people that listen to this interview, how it inspires you and what miracles you create and just to keep uh, sharing. Absolutely. You know? Absolutely, yes. So on that note, I think it's time. Um, I will put a link below for people to be able to get in connection with you. And also above and beyond all this beautiful wisdom, you're also um, gonna share a free gift with our listeners. Do you wanna yeah. explain what that is really quick? Yeah. Yeah, so if anybody would like to experience what this work is about, there's a 20 minute uh, free meditation. You lay down and you close your eyes, put on a headset if you can. And basically it teaches you how to process and release, how to forgive, how to let go mm -hmm. on all levels. So physical, mm -hmm. mental, emotional, spiritual, it just, it's like Windex, you know, it does everything. <laughs> I love meditation on how it benefits everyone. Thank you for having me, January. Thank you so much, Michelle. And thank you everybody for joining us.